I'm very pleased to welcome a wonderful panel of guests to discuss the much talked about Matter Protocol and how the collaboration between our companies and 200 more have come together to create interoperability, simplicity, reliability, and flexibility for the smart home industry. Please welcome our panelists, including several members of the CSA Board of Directors. Nathan Dick, Chief Product Officer at NanoLeaf, Kevin Krauss, Vice President of Global Programs and Technology Alliances at Asa Abloy, Michelle Mandala Friedman, Head of Marketing for CSA, Kevin Poe, Senior Product Manager at Google, and Mark Teacup, Director of Product Management here at SmartThings. Welcome. Michelle, we'd like to start off by hearing from you. What is matter? What's all the industry fuss about? Why does this exist? What problems are we solving? Maybe you could kick us off. Absolutely, and thank you so much for having me here today. Uh, I'll start by saying, well, uh, over the years, as IoT and smart home has grown, we've seen a surge in IoT technology options and solutions. The result has been kind of a fragmented market with technology and solution silos. Uh, while that was okay in the early days, fragmentation in the long term really slows growth and adoption. Every day, consumers are trying to are stuck and they're trying to sort out compatibility and setup and interoperability. And on the development side, sometimes the manufacturers are stuck having either to make choices about which technologies to adopt, which may limit their market potential, or adopting multiple technologies, which increases cost for development, maybe product variance, increasing time to market, and leaves less to invest in innovation. So Matter is really designed to help address all of those issues to break down the silos, to reduce fragmentation, to make it easier for customers to choose smart home products and to give developers the tools that they need so that they can pivot their energies from just developing the basics of connectivity and protocols into areas that really will allow them to invest more in innovation and in differentiation. Nathan, what are your thoughts on this? Does this resonate with you? Um, why now? Why is now the right time for Matter? Absolutely, in, in terms of you know, the amount of time that we've had to spend with our products. We, we started with Zigbee on our light bulbs. We use Wi-Fi on our light panels, uh, and now we're using threads. We, we spent a lot of time integrating with all of the different platforms, uh, smart things, HomeKit, Google, Alexa, uh, and all of them are a little different. We've spent a lot of time uh, developing that, investing in that, um, but uh, at the same time, that's time that's not spent actually building, you know, differentiating value for, for our users. Um, and with chip and sorry, with matter, uh, that's something that's going to change for us. Uh, we're going to spend a lot more time uh, focusing on what's most important for the user. Isn't it true? Those of us who have been around, we went for with uh, Project Connected Home over IP, and we all switched to Matter. It's been an exciting journey for all of us, and I think all of us still sometimes say Project Chip as well. Kevin Poe, I'd, I'd really like to hear from Google's perspective on why now, and why is the problem that we're solving now so important. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's one of those things where like there's just been such fantastic growth in the smart home industry over the past decade. But with that growth, there has been that uh, that that purchase frustration of like, how do I actually understand like what devices work with what in the smart home itself? Mm -hmm. And so with that, we see we see that a lot with our users these days and across the industry. And we're just really excited uh, with Matter. We can actually make that really simple for for all users, such that you know if there's with this with, with this Matter branding. The, the customer can actually trust bringing that back home. And if they choose to connect with Google, Samsung, and others in the ecosystem, they actually are, are going to have a really easy, uh, you know, an easy way to do it. So uh, with, with that really, uh, you know, that, that mess around interoperability and choice uh, for everyone, and, and especially as Google, we're both a platform provider and also device maker with, uh, with our Nest products, we see this as a way to really kind of simplify that interoperability, um, you know, across uh, our portfolio and, 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 and the full user base too. So the timing is right. And the problem is clear. Um, Michelle, how does Matter address these challenges specifically? These um, quite clearly, we know the challenge. We think the timing is right. Uh, how does Matter solve for this? Well, absolutely. I think I think you've you've already mentioned that we were formerly known as Project Chip, and and now as we've been renamed to Matter, uh, it is about the foundation, creating that foundational platform for the future of the Internet of Things and for smart home. And Matter is really a common language. So uh, a common application protocol and data model that will let those compatible devices and, and ecosystems communicate with each other, regardless of the underlying brand. 
So as you stated earlier, matter's goal is to be simple, interoperable, reliable, secure. And now with matter, smart home devices will be easier for consumers to purchase and use. You won't need to look for those matching brands. You'll look for matter. And this will improve the retail experience. Fewer duplicative products on the shelves, less retail complexity, and hopefully fewer returns. It should make the problem of development simpler. Uh, and the matter developer assets like an open source software development toolkit, test tools, strong certification program should speed the development process and ease some of the challenges that Nathan mentioned in terms of development. Uh, matter should allow for consistent, reliable, local connectivity. And from a design perspective, it's secure by design. So every device joining is authenticated. Every message is protected. And I'll add one more small thing. I think it's really important to remind folks that Matter is developed by this amazing community of members in the CSA. While Matter has been in the works since 2019, our members have actually been working together to develop standards and protocols for nearly 20 years, formerly under the name of the Zigbee Alliance. So it's good to know that if you'd use and choose to develop with Matter, you're getting this really great force multiplier of the hundreds of companies and engineers who are participating to propel Matter forward. It's funny, we get asked all the time, did, do these companies really come together? You really are working, is that really what goes on behind the scenes? And I think we could say a, a, an emphatic yes. Uh, it's it's like working with your siblings. Okay, Kevin uh, Kevin from Asa Abloy, and um, we hear CSA's perspective on this as a device maker with a huge portfolio of install based of products uh, based on protocols like uh, Wi-Fi and Zigbee, Z-Wave and Thread. What's your outlook for uh, these different protocols and matter? Well, that's a great question for, for a manufacturer. Um, you know, Matter's a application layer. It's got great promise. It should be ubiquitous, as Michelle said, deployed globally. But it takes time, and it's going to be a different adoption rate in the consumer channel than even like the pro channel. So you have multiple channels that manufacturers like us support. Um, so it will evolve, and while it does, the other technologies, uh, like you said, Z-Wave, Zigbee, Thread, they're not going to go away. They're not going to be abandoned or, or um, left out there, you know, and, um, on the sidewalk. Uh, we'll continue to support them. If you're using uh, Z-Wave in the pro channel now, continue to do so if that feels right for you. And as Michelle said, this key thing, Matter is not trying to leave those behind. There's a bridge specification. If you choose, you'll be able to have those products in the future through a matter to example z waiver zigbee bridge continue to work so there's no there's no uh you know goal here for matter to uh, abandon you know existing ecosystems or uh, leave those types of things behind so it'll take time and while it does uh manufacturers such as apple as Oble will be loyal to our customers will continue to support those technologies while we help evolve matter and uh, help you with uh, your future products I think one thing that we've all learned as as the market has matured is that there are places and markets for many different things. Um, Zigbee has an incredibly rich ecosystem of developers, of solution providers, and devices of all types uh, out in the market and still in development. So. Zigbee will still continue to evolve. Our members are in fact evolving the standard now and they are still developing and certifying products. Uh, interestingly enough, we reached a big milestone earlier this year with over 4,000 Zigbee certified products out there. So while Matter and Zigbee are different standards, there is some commonality under the CSA. And specifically, both of them are based on a common data model with very common data attributes that the CSA will continue to develop uh, and evolve for both standards. And while there's those millions of devices in homes and businesses today that use Zigbee and other technologies, it's important for us as we think about matter and coexistence that matter enables some level of continuity between those other technologies and itself. So part of matter will also include a bridge specification that will allow development of bridge solutions between those other technologies like Zigbee and matter. So people can be confident they can continue to build out their smart homes today. They can see the value that smart home delivers and still trust that their investments are protected over time in a world where all these technologies coexist. 
It's exciting no matter how you look at it, right? And this is an inflection point for our industry. And um, it's so interesting to hear how we manage the variety of protocols and um, timing and lighting and the, the way in which we make sure that we're supporting our developers as individual companies and together when we consider the standard. Um, Mark, uh, Mark Tika, um, from a smart things perspective, can you talk a little bit more about how smart things is supporting these IoT protocols? Um, you know, I think the points that both Michelle and Kevin raised are spot on. Um, at SmartThings, we've always been an open platform with support for different protocols. Uh, we're, we're really excited about Matter and emerging technologies like Thread, and we are working to add support for both of these in our platform. At the same time, we're committed to continuing support for existing protocols like Zigbee and Z-Wave. Our developer community has made really significant investments around both of these technologies. Um, over the years, and many of our users have huge installs in their homes with dozens or even hundreds of devices in their house. So things like door locks, light switches, garage door openers, these are really difficult and expensive to replace. And when people buy these products, they expect them to last a long time, 10, 15, 20 years. In my own house, I installed dozens of connected light switches after I moved in, and the thought of me going around and replacing all of those and rewiring them is really hard to fathom. <laughs> So, you know, I think the point of bridging, which was raised earlier, um, bridging is going to be really important between existing and new new protocols, and that's going to help the industry transition smoothly forward and also protect consumer investments. And Kevin from Google, um, in thinking about um, the way that we're investing in future technologies, Thread and Wi-Fi come up a lot in conversations about matter. Can you help us understand the relationship between these protocols? Yeah, absolutely. So, so Matter, uh, as a refresher, is an application layer protocol. So what this means is that uh, the notions of like, how do I pair, how do I discover, and how do I interoperate and communicate with different devices, be it a light thermostat or different controllers, that's really what that specification defines. We need to make sure that the overall stack itself um, is, is clearly well-defined such that a user, when they actually do purchase a Matter device, they bring it back home with that branding. They can trust that it can interoperate in this fashion. So with respect to uh, the, the lower layers, which is what we call the network layer, Matter supports thread and Wi-Fi uh, for, for those particular use cases. So Wi-Fi is a clear choice for, for like mains powered, high bandwidth like, yeah, like applications. Where Thread really comes in is really for those low power, low memory applica like applications, be it door locks, sensors, and such. And Thread provides a lot of benefits. So one, it's uh, an IP bearing network, which means that it can run matter on top. It can provide that end-to-end -end addressability and security that Mich Michelle mentioned. As well, it's a very reliable, scalable, fault tolerant network uh, because it's built on mesh networking technology, which means that when you have different Thread actors in, in the home, you add if you add more and more devices in there, your network gets even stronger. Such that if, for instance, um, uh, one of the kind of communication paths goes offline, it will actually recover and then provide uh, that the connectivity and and that end-to-end -end experience. So we see this as a as a key technology in the home to really kind of scale up to the hundreds of, of devices that users are going to have over time and really provide a really robust experience for 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 everyone. And Nathan, we know that recently you announced thread support in several of your lighting solutions. Um, what's your vision for Matter and Thread in the smart home? Sure, yeah. I mean, Kevin touched on a lot of the points around why Thread is so exciting. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about Zigbee before. With Zigbee, a lot of the things that we wanted to do just weren't possible. They, they, you'd be putting a device into a Zigbee network that you could never talk to because it was behind a, a, a hub before. With Thread, that connectivity, which is exactly what enables Matter, is what enables the rest of the innovation. So with our vision, you know, we've got our border routers, uh, which are built into our latest elements and shapes products. Uh, those border routers help support the thread mesh. They, they provide connectivity for all of the lower power devices. So sensors in particular are really important. Motion sensors, for example, you know, smart lighting in the future, everyone, everything needs to be motion sensor driven um, in an intelligent way. Uh, so hooking up those motion sensors to the lights, you know, with thread, you can do that without anything in, in between. They can just talk directly to each other. And then with the border router in the middle, uh, it enables things around matter. You can connect to your smartphone um, and uh, connect to all of the different platforms that are um, involved with matter. It's really exciting. Especially for our developer community who might be just getting started with matter or just starting to learn a little bit about it. Um, Nanoleaf has announced a thread border router support in products, yes. Um, but maybe we could go back just a little bit on what is a thread border router and 
Will border routers only work with specific ecosystems? Will be them more open, like Wi-Fi access points? Yeah, the border router, basically what it is, is it, it's a device that translates from Wi-Fi into thread, and it does that over IPv6, the IP, the IP network. That's the exact same as how things com communicate on Wi-Fi. It's the exact same how, how things communicate on the broader internets. Um, so border router itself, it's actually, it's a feature, not necessarily a product. It can be built into a smart TV uh, of the future, um, or it can be built into our shapes and our elements, like I said, or it can be built into a smart display like the ones from Google. Um, so there's all, all these different product types that will come with border routing capabilities or already have them in market. They just need to switch that on and they just send whatever traffic it is. So that might be matter traffic. It might be some cool stuff that Analyf is doing. It might be some cool stuff that uh, all of the other companies on this panel are doing. Um, and that's really where you know IP is so strong. IP has driven the internet. It's driven all of the innovation. You see pretty much everything that you see in tech. Um, all of it comes down to that IP backbone uh, in, in many places. So would it be fair to say that the goal really is a unified ubiquitous network like Wi-Fi to support the smart home? Exactly. With with a border router in place, thread devices look like Wi-Fi devices. They're the exact same. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think like that that unified thread vision, when we kicked off the thread group uh, with a number of the key partners here back in 2014, it was really to create that interoperable mesh in the home, right? Where, where, where users can benefit from the choice, the openness, and different you know uh, member companies can uh, adopt the protocol and again, create a, a really rich experience. One of the key areas where users set up connected home devices is on mobile. Right, uh, and especially on, on Android, uh, and with the, with the billions of Androids of phones out there, we can really make it easy uh, to, to onboard Thread devices in the home. Uh, so we'll actually be providing Thread APIs uh, in in our Android um, uh, mobile services over time to really make it easy to uh, add devices and also manage the devices within home too. So uh, just stay tuned for that uh, in, in the near future. But we're real excited about essentially enabling the unified vision from that perspective. Kevin, thanks for sharing the perspective on Thread and giving us that overview. Uh, changing gears a little bit here, one of the most exciting features of Matter is the idea of multi-admin. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about this, explain what it is, and really in layman's terms, for our developer network that is just getting on board with Matter, how is multi-admin uh, different from the current state of the smart home, and what's your perspective on it? Yeah, absolutely. And this is one of the, the key features of Matter itself and one of the key differentiators uh, that uh, I think as, as developers get more familiar with it, they'll be like, aha, like this is what we've been waiting for for a very long time. So I think as as we're all smart home enthusiasts, uh, it's um, it's been challenging to, to say the least to set up uh, devices, especially like once you start buying into the smart home promise and you 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 click you you start uh, getting devices from multiple different manufacturers and device makers and such. Adding new systems and experiences is pretty painful. You end up going through multiple different setup linking flows, and by the time you're done, uh, even adding new successive systems is pretty challenging. And something that we have to keep in mind is that there's many different types of users in a home, right? Some some users might have certain platform preferences and certain personal choices of what they actually want. So it really address this key pain point, the group developed this multi-admin feature, which makes it really easy to pick and choose devices that, um, that, that, it, that a user already has uh, connected into their Matter network and then add new systems on top of it. And so again, based on that user consent, it's really easy to say, I, I'm, you know, I have a home with maybe three or four light bulbs and a, a lock, adding those into the new system itself. So we see this as, a real, again, a really great way to, to, to reduce the friction and really the ease of adoption in, in, in trying out the smart home uh, and it, it kind of growing and expanding based on yours and if you have other other members of your families uh, or, or, or different partners and such uh, such as needs. Um, and so with it, um, you know, it's really ultimately does come down to member adoption and the implementation of it. So the specification has a number of affordances to make this happen. We're really looking forward, forward to working with a lot of the different members within this, this forum to really make that as easy, uh, easy and seamless as possible and leveraging, you know, tech, like, like platforms like Android and, and others to, to, to really um, deliver this benefit for all our users. I mean, consumers want choice, right? Nobody wants their options to be limited based on, you know, what mobile phone or voice assistant that they use in their homes. Um, imagine going and buying a new house and then realizing that you have to replace all the appliances and light switches because they don't work with uh, the ecosystem that you want to use, right? Um, so, you know, matter support for multi-admin or multiple administrators, it paves the way for different ecosystems and services to coexist with each other and work together over that single unified network that um, Kevin talked about a little bit ago.
And at Smart Things, we're committed to make this as seamless as possible for our users, and and we look forward to working, uh, you know, with the other companies on this panel and in the, in the working group to make this a reality and deliver on that promise. Looking at um, the big questions that are on the table, like multi-admin and customer choice, another one that comes to mind really is how do we plan to differentiate? Okay, the standard is widely adopted, and now what? Um, how do companies like yours? Um, plan to differentiate. And maybe we'll start with um, Kevin from Asa Abloy. I'd love to hear a little bit about um, how we plan to differentiate in a post-matter world. Well, again, with the multi-admin, I'll start there. It allows us to do one integration and have our products work with uh, a Google Home Hub, a um, um, Smart Things Hub, and uh, an Amazon Voice Assistant seamlessly. And you can set up in one and and all of the, as uh, I think uh, uh, Nathan said, you know, you might have a preference that you've got an a iOS user and you've got a, a strong Google user in the house. Well, they can both now use the lock and, and get data from it and all of those things that they want to do without having to really change anything or give up their preferences. Um, the other benefit to a manufacturer is we can now focus a lot more on innovation than worrying about having to have 14 different integrations. In today's world, right now, as an example, our locks use radio modules um, for all these different ecosystems. Um, we use plug-in modules to help manage our SKU count, but I still have over 14 different radios I ship every day right now. And imagine now how happy operations will be at all manufacturers and cost reductions, et cetera, volume increases um, by only having one or two. And so we're really excited about this, the opportunity that brings. And we think uh, the same thing from a consumer perspective, they can have a lot more confidence in the store knowing that this uh, lock, Yale lock from Asable is just gonna work with their matter system, then get it home and realize as, as Mark said, oh, well, okay, but I got the wrong hub version. Now I gotta go back and I gotta get something else. Um, that should all go away. And I think that this is really going to raise the bar in consumer delight. And uh, we're, we're really looking forward to, as you say, a, a, a matter world where a lot of these things that consumers and uh, manufacturers now have to worry about don't exist anymore. Uh, Nathan, do you have anything to share on your side on how your company plans to differentiate in a post-matter world? I think if anyone who has, has seen our products, they, they, they know how we look to differentiate. So, you know, as a, as a lighting company, we differentiate visually uh, first and foremost. Uh, so we love to build our products um, as, as beautiful as beautiful as they can be, uh, and and they really are, in my opinion, and and in many of our users' opinions. But uh, you know, we're going to continue to do that. We we differentiate in a, in a number of different ways as well on the software side, uh, and we have some pretty cool plans to continue to do that. You know, I I think about what. You know, as a lighting manufacturer, even as a smart home manufacturer, if you can beat your chest and say, we've we've differentiated, we've innovated by connecting to a new platform in another way than everyone else has done. Like it's, it's just not, not what is exciting, right? What's exciting is what's to come, um, uh, you know, in this post matter world. So differentiation, I don't see a, a huge problem or a problem at all. I'm, I'm really excited for that to, to open up without having to worry about how to connect to everyone. Yeah, absolutely. And that kind of leads into, you know, the difference between fragment where we have been a fragmented world and really trying to move into a, a world where the experiences um, matter first, uh, no pun intended. Um, Mark, do you have anything to add there on maybe smart things perspective on how we look at differentiation? Sure. Yeah, I mean, echoing some of the other comments here um, in the past due to the fragmentation that's existed, our developers and our partners spend a ton of energy just to get basic connectivity and interoperability and getting thing A to, talk to thing B. Um, by standardizing that app layer with Matter, um, it really makes interoperability ta table stakes. It, it just comes with it. Um, and that allows all of us to really focus on our core business and not the underlying technology, right? And with that, we can all move faster. We can focus, focus our energy on creating really incredible experiences um, for users that run on top of Samsung and partner products. And I think it's really going to, you know, it's going to have multiplicative effects where we can all, you know, work together, collaborate and, and drive innovation in new ways that, you know, aren't even thought about today in the smart home. So really excited about the future. You touched on it and we've all, we've all been kind of going around in the same circles for a long time. It kind of gets to the topic of works with programs and, um, 
it's an interesting way to look at what the future of works with smart things and works with smart things partnerships look like even before matter smart things has always been a proponent of open ecosystems and connected devices and services across ecosystems most people on this panel have also been a wwst partner for a long time um, i'd love to know a little bit about how you see your matter integration working with the smart things platform going forward maybe kevin kraus i can ask you to answer that one first well, thank you um yeah and we we've, we've always uh really enjoyed our integration relationship with uh, samsung and smart things it's, it's been a great uh, journey we've been on together um you know and we've always integrated across these ecosystems uh, the you know some of the the uh, smart things hubs of uh, z-wave and zigbee in them and they can use either version of a a Yale lock that does that. Um, so the benefits will be in the future, now with Matter, uh, you'll be able to, again, seamlessly integrate any of the, uh, the different products you want. And as a standard, one of the things, again, I mentioned a little earlier is about the manufacturer being able to be more innovative. And that's that will always be ahead of a standard. And that's not a negative. That's just how standards work. And that a standard, for example, for lighting or locks will have a a MVP or a feature set that all of the manufacturers will can abide to and certify to. But above and beyond that, we have additional features. We always have. We're known as the most innovative lock company. We can offer those features to uh, Sam Samsung SmartThings to integrate directly, which they've done and uh, above a lot of the other uh, hubs in the market. Or they can do that through the Yale Access system. So, for example, let's say they want to use our auto unlock feature. They can do that and still be fully integrated with Matter at the same time. So they get the best of both worlds. So we're very excited about this. Again, we know that uh, smart things, Samsung are very forward thinking. So it's always been great to uh, be a, a integration partner with them for that reason. We're happy to be one with you too. Um, and Nathan, do you have anything to add to that? You know, how how do you see your Matter integrations working with the smart things platform going forward? Yeah, so I mean, our, our products in market today are, are, are lights. Um, so naturally, we, we want to be controlled by smart things. I think smart things has, an, has a great strength around automation and, you know, uh, probably the longest standing um, uh, connection with, with sensors uh, out of the big platforms, you know, given the smart things history prior to, to the Samsung acquisition. But that, that's a great strength that we're looking to leverage through Matter. Um, Moving forward, we, we have some products coming with uh, that actually drive sensing and, and drive control. Um, so having those integrate really well with the other lighting partners and the other pr products, the uh, smart products that uh, that'll work through Matter on smart things. That's uh, a really exciting part of it. We've talked a lot today about being uh, the tip of the spear for where the IoT industry is going as a whole. Um, today we had exciting news from VP Jiang Zheng at Smart Things that Samsung will adopt uh, Matter as a controller across multiple surfaces. Exciting news for us. I um, would like to hear from the panelists on uh, how do you feel like this could move the needle for the industry? Kevin from Google, we'll start with you. Yeah, absolutely. We, we find this this news like absolutely exciting. Uh, it's one of those things where we, we definitely want to reach users where they're at. And so the ability to have controllers so deeply embedded to so many products, um, we think is going to deliver a great benefit. Along with that, with I think both uh, Samsung and Google's commitments around openness and interoperability and choice, there's a lot of ways that we can also uh, open up the, the ecosystem devices that uh, are going to be connected through our respective platforms to uh, uh, like, uh, enable that control over those, those services. So we really do see this as net positive and also you know, with the different regions that we all uh, operate, um, it does expand the, the capabilities right, that Matter uh, can, can provide for, for those users. Yeah, it's it's very exciting. Uh, you know, being a part of the matter, you know, previously chip since 2019 and seeing the big names and and now seeing all of the big cards fall, you know, it's 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 vindication that this is something that's real, that's something exciting, and it's something that's gonna, you know, break open smart home for for everybody. So we're really excited for that. Well, we're definitely aligned with Samsung in that we are willing, are ready to promote matter uh, globally and. Uh, across uh, not only existing markets, but emerging markets. And we truly believe that Matter will become a global standard and we're really excited to be aligned with uh, Samsung on this journey. We're excited to work together with each of you and your companies continuing to drive forward the future of IoT with Matter. 
thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for taking time to discuss the important topics like multi-admin, interoperability, and of course, customer choice for our developers and consumers. Thank you for joining us and look forward to sharing more with you about Matter in the coming days.